Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another segment of On The Mic With Mike. I'm your host, Mike On The Mic, and let's get this show on the road. For today's show, we will be talking about three different topics. Topic number one, congratulations to the Toronto Raptors on taking home your first ever NBA trophy. Yes, the Larry O'Brien, the Larry O.B., as Kawhi Leonard would say, is in the north. It took the Raptors six games to take down the Golden State Warriors. They won the sixth game by four points in the end off two free throws made by Kawhi Leonard. Luckily for the Raptors, the Golden State Warriors were a little bit injury prone throughout the last series and throughout the entire playoffs with Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson going down a couple times. But they walked home with the Larry O'Brien and they had a huge parade in Toronto to celebrate. Let's get on to topic number two. We are on to free agency slash balancing out the league. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I know the Toronto Raptors are on top of the world at this moment in time for basketball, but that will not be the case forever. Their number one star and MVP of the playoffs, Kawhi Leonard, is gone. He has taken his talents down to his hometown in L.A., and he has decided to sign a four-year, $140 million contract with the L.A. Clippers. Not the Lakers, no. Good try, LeBron, but you're not going to be getting Kawhi. Over the last decade, there are a couple of interesting stats I'd like to read off. So obviously, a decade is 10 years, and in that 10 years, there have been seven different champions. Seven different teams have won the championship in those 10 years. Nine different teams have reached the finals in those 10 years. 20 teams can reach the finals. Two teams make the finals per year. That is 20 after 10 years. And only nine. Let that sink in there for a minute, folks. I don't want to bore everybody with numbers, but I'm going to do it once again. Out of those nine teams, only five, five, have made the finals only one time in those ten years. That means that four different teams shared 15 spots in the NBA Finals. Golden State with astonishing five, Cleveland with four, Miami with four, and San Antonio with a lonely two. Now, you may be asking... Why am I spitting off all these facts about the league? Well, here is your answer. The NBA will no longer be the way it has been for the last decade. The 2019 free agency has been a hectic, crazy ride. It has been very anticipated and one of the most adventurous off-seasons I've ever seen. Now, from my conducted research, I have labeled down... 10 to 15 players that are considered to be impact players and that were moved throughout the offseason. Now, this includes trades and not only free agency. I'm not going to list all 10 to 15, but I do have a list of nine here just for you and the teams they are going to and why the league will be so much more balanced for the next decade than it has been for the last. Just a couple of takes of this offseason. The Brooklyn Nets swung big and got big. Uh, They signed Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Both obviously all-star players and they could be starting a franchise dynasty down there if they want to. The LA Clippers signed Kawhi Leonard and trade for Paul George. Not only with that, but having a great coach and one of the defensive teams of the year. The Warriors somehow were able to remain Clay Thompson in the Warrior jersey and keep him in San Francisco. Yes, I say San Francisco because they are going across the bridge this year. They were also able to get a sign and trade done and get D'Angelo Russell. They did lose both DeMarcus Cousins and Kevin Durant, but that's okay. They also lost key pieces like Iguodala and Cook. But I could see them right back up there in the playoffs next season, hunting for another finals run. And finally, how could we forget of the infamous L.A. Lakers? 
acquiring Anthony Davis, Danny Green, and DeMarcus Cousins, and just as I was saying, Quinn Cook. Man, the Lakers are looking good. That lineup sounds stacked already to me. LeBron James and Anthony Davis are going to be cranking the floor, and Danny Green's going to be cranking it from three. Not going to be a fun time for anybody in the league. Now, I've set up a list of my favorite slash contenders for next season. Now, if I was to do this for the last season we just had, I wouldn't even have more than four teams on that list. Number one, I would have the Golden State Warriors, probably winning the entire thing. Number two, the Milwaukee Bucks. Again, probably making the finals, but losing. Number three, the Toronto Raptors. I would not have expected them to go all the way and win at all, but I would have expected them to go pretty far, especially with the acquisition of Kawhi Leonard. And then number four, obviously, would have been the LA Lakers or the Houston Rockets. Once, obviously, when LeBron went to the Lakers, the thought is he's going to carry the Lakers. He got hurt. Some stuff went down. The rookies weren't really good enough to play yet. I know they aren't rookies, but their young talent didn't propel them into the playoffs, so they weren't given the opportunity to thrive. So I go to the Rockets, and the Rockets again with CP3 and James Harden. You would think they might be able to take a crack at the Golden State Warriors, especially with a hindered back end and no Kevin Durant. Now, here are my favorites for this season. In the Eastern Conference, I only have two teams listed at the moment. The Milwaukee Bucks and the Philadelphia 76ers. Of course, I would have the Toronto Raptors, and I actually do have them at the very bottom as a long shot. They would really have to get good soon. I know they have a ton of cap space, but I don't know what MVP caliber player is going to come to Toronto and do what Kawhi Leonard did last season so short of notice. In the Western Conference, I have quite a bit more teams. Well, number one, obviously, the LA Lakers, Anthony Davis, LeBron James, how could you go wrong? Number two, the LA Clippers, again, how could you go wrong? You got Paul George and you got Kawhi Leonard. And then back to the Rockets, I know uh, Chris Paul, he's not a big fan of Harden right now. Uh, apparently, word is out that they're not big fans of each other and that could really cost them. But you know what, I still got him up there because you got to have faith in Harden. You got to fear the beard a little bit. And number four, I don't think this is a shocker to anybody. The Golden State Warriors would still be on my contenders list. Yes, I still think they can go all the way. D'Angelo Russell, Clay Thompson. I know Clay's out for quite a while, but from what I heard at the end of the playoffs, he was going to be out until at least the next year's playoffs. But from what I've heard, he could be back in the middle of the season next year. So I think if he comes back and he starts playing subpar, they are much better than most teams in that Western Conference and could make it pretty far in those playoffs. And again, my long shot for the Western Conference would be the Denver Nuggets. Finishing number two in the conference this season, they had a weak off season, not making any big splashes and really just kind of holding on to what they have. They decided on just trying to build from beneath and trying to build from the draft instead of going out there and spending some money. We'll see if it pays off, but I'm very doubtful, and I think that they won't have the easiest time of getting there. Why is this decade approaching better than the last decade? Just look at this decade, and there's only one person to thank, and that's Kawhi Leonard. You look at last decade. LeBron James ran the show. He was in 8 of the 10 finals appearances. He made 8 straight finals appearances. 8. That is insane. That is a number that I don't even want to think about. That is going through high school 2 times that he did in the finals. That is absolutely insane to me. 8 years. But you know what that is? That's unbalanced. That created an unbalanced league, and it just turned out to be a Golden State Warrior Cleveland fest for, what was it, four or five straight years? Five straight years? No, four straight years, sorry. That's, That's what killed the league in the last decade. Now, what's different about this decade ahead? 
like I said, it's all up to Kawhi Leonard. And it was all Kawhi Leonard why this upcoming decade will be the most competitive decade I have ever seen in my entire life. Kawhi Leonard had the opportunity to go to three teams in the end. If we're being 100% honest, he was going to the Lakers, the Clippers, or the Raptors. If he went to two of those teams, he would have made the league very competitive. He could have gone to that one other team, though, the LA Lakers, and it would have ruined the league for the next decade again. I know it's, it's hard to say, but Kawhi Leonard saved the NBA from another decade of what has just happened. Listing all those teams that have possibilities of winning a championship next season. You couldn't do that a year ago. You couldn't do that 10 years ago. It just wasn't possible. But because of Kawhi Leonard and his decision to make the Western Conference way more competitive, it changes the league dynamic forever. I am very hopeful for the next decade of the NBA, as you can tell. And I hope it is much better than the last decade. If there have to be rules put in place to find ways to keep teams like Golden State from forming, it has to be done. The league must stay competitive. Sure, the Raptors winning is nothing short of a miracle. The Golden State Warriors should have won, hands down, but there was a miracle that said that enough was enough and that the dynasty was to come to an end and the league would find competitiveness once again. And now, for part three. I've been dragging this part for quite a bit now. But here we go. Kawhi Leonard, I would like to say thank you. On behalf of MLSE, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. The NBA. Thank you. Not just for joining a team and not forming the Lakers super team. But for what you did for Canadian basketball. I hope that when you return to Toronto next season, you get nothing but well wishes and nothing but cheers. They should have a statue for you. I would not be surprised if your number was retired. I know, one season, it's laughable, really. But one season that changed everything. One season that could not be done by Vince Carter. One season that could not be done by Stratemeyer. One season that could not be done by DeMar DeRozan. But what was done by you, Kawhi Leonard. One year ago, John Tavares of the New York Islanders in the NHL decided to take his talents to his hometown in Toronto to play for the Maple Leafs. I 100% 100% respect your decision to leave. You wanted to go home. You played your entire career in San Antonio. You won championship in San Antonio with a bunch of aging Hall of Famers. You asked for a trade to LA. And you got traded to Toronto. You came here, yeah, I know you said you came here with open arms, but let's be honest. You wanted to go home. And I'm sure Toronto has become a home for you. I'm sure that it has become a special place for you to come. But it's not home. No Raptor fan should be upset at Kawhi Leonard. As he did something that kids dream of doing. Going home to play for their hometown team.
thank you, Kawhi Leonard, for everything you have done. Your laugh, your New Balance shoes, your work ethic, your championship. Everything you have done has changed this country. I wish you all the best down in LA in your hometown with the Clippers. I hope it is everything you have ever dreamed of. And I hope it's a decision that you don't regret. Thank you for everything. Sincerely, Mike on the mic. Thank you for listening.